Hello again. In data mining, people are always asking, how much data do I need? And we're going to show you how you can address that question in this lesson using learning curves. So the advice on evaluation from data mining with Weka was if you've got a large separate test set, then just go ahead and use the, uh, use the test set. If you've got lots of data, then use a holdout method. Otherwise, use tenfold cross-validation. It's the best way of getting the most reliable performance estimate out of a limited amount of data. And you might repeat it ten times or more, like the experimenter does. But how much data is a lot? Well, that's a good question, and there is no answer. It depends. Supposing you've got a thousand instances, well, that sounds like quite a lot. If you've got a two-class data set with 500 of each class, then maybe that's pretty good. If you've got a 10-class data set with a thousand instances and the classes are unevenly distributed, so maybe for some instances, for, for some classes, there are only 10 or 15 instances, well, that doesn't sound so good, although perhaps you don't care about those small classes. Depends on the number of attributes. Again, with your 1,000 instance data set, that sounds like a lot. But if you have 1,000 attributes, that might not be uh, such a lot, such a lot of instances. Depends on the structure of the domain. You know, are you looking for complicated kind of uh, decision boundaries? And it depends on the kind of model, the sort of decision boundaries it makes. So if you've got a, a machine learning technique that looks for linear decision boundaries, then they're pretty simple. You might not need so much data as you would for ones that look for more convoluted linear boundaries or for decision trees, perhaps. So it's an impossible question to answer. The only way to look at it really is to look at it empirically using learning curves. So I've shown a plot here of a learning curve as the size of the training data increases, the performance gets better and better, but of course it asymptotes off. And the point where it starts to asymptote off is probably uh, enough training data to get a reliable estimate. So let's talk about uh, how to plot a learning curve in Weka. We're going to sample the data. And when you do sampling, you're going to choose a sample. And you need to understand the difference between sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. So when you sample, it's really a question of whether you move or copy the data. If you sample with replacement, then it's like you take it out of the original data set and put it into the sample data set and then replace it back in the original data set. You don't really take it out. You copy it from the sample data, the instance from the original data set to the sample data set. Without replacement means you kind of move it, so you can't see it again. You can't sample it twice. If you sample with replacement, then instances might occur more than one, more than once in the sample data set. Uh, if you sample without replacement, then they can't. So that's the first thing. We're going to sample the training set, but not the test set. We want to uh, find out how performance changes as the size of the training set increases. But the test set sort of determines the reliability of our estimate. We don't want to make that artificially smaller. So we always want to use the same size test set. And we can do that in Weka by using the filtered classifier. I mean, there's a resample filter, and if we wrap that up in a filtered classifier, that means that the uh, filtering will apply to the training data and not to the test data. So I'm going to do that with a glass data set. I've opened the glass data set here. I'm going to go to classify, and I'm going to find the, in meta, I'm going to find the filtered classifier. And uh, then I'm going to check. I'm going to use J48 as the classifier. And for the filter, I'm going to use the resample filter. It's an unsupervised instance filter. We're resampling instances. There it is. And let's look at this parameter. So we can sample with or without replacement. And I would like to sample with no replacement. So I want to make that true. Uh, and I, let's say I want a 50% sample, so I can go ahead and run that. And I'm doing tenfold cross-validation, uh, sampling the training set, 50% samples of the, tra of the training set, and leaving the test set untouched, and I get 65% uh, performance here. So back to the slide. Uh, here is the 50% uh, level here, 65% performance. 
And I did this for other sample sizes, and I could uh, enable me to plot this learning curve empirically. The performance against the percentage of training data I'm using. And I've shown the 0R performance there for reference. Well, the line's a bit jagged, and to do uh, get a smoother kind of line, I'd want to do it several times with cross-validation. So if I do 10 repetitions of J48, then I get this line here. I did this with the experimenter, very easy to do. Then I did 1,000 repetitions. I get this red line here, the quite smooth kind of line. So you can look at this line and make your own judgment as to how much training data you need to get pretty close to the ultimate accuracy of J48 in this data set. And it looks like, providing you have maybe 50-60% of the training data, you're going to be fairly close to the final accuracy. So that's it for learning curve. The question is, how much data is enough? And the answer is, we don't know. So uh, you can plot a learning curve. Uh, we looked at resampling with and without replacement, but we didn't want to sample the test set because that would just decrease the reliability of evaluation. We used, the, so we used a filtered classifier, and obviously the performance figures you get are only estimates, and you can improve the reliability of those estimates by repeating the test several times. That's it for now. Off you go and do the activity, and uh, we'll see you again in the next lesson. Bye for now.